<laughs> Come on, Brother Chris, God bless you. Let's give him a great hand. Well, are you, are you happy tonight? Yeah. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you glad for Jesus? Amen. Are you glad you're saved? Amen. Sir so Nadine was telling me, I love to hear these stories, that her, was it grandma or aunt? Oh, she's my great aunt. Like your great, great, your great aunt was at the second general council of the Assemblies of God. Mm -hmm. So this was back in 1915. Wow. Does anybody ever remember 1915? <laughs> How many of you feel like you were there though anyway? <laughs> uh, especially when you get tired, or as they say in Texas, dog tired. And I enjoyed that Sister Selvis was telling me that her grandfather worked with P.C. Nelson and, this, and he's the one that articulated the Assemblies of God doctrine and they helped start Southwestern in Eden, Oklahoma. So I, I'm very privileged to get to know these and hear these stories because you know what folks, the story's not over. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Y'all get that? Amen. Everybody say the story, the story is not over. It's over. You know when it's over? When Jesus comes back, wraps us in church, Hallelujah. comes back again after seven years, as Sister Kim just said, uh -huh. on a white horse. Yeah. We have the battle oh. again. Then Jesus Christ sets up his earthly kingdom for 1,000 years. He rules and reigns. At the end of that 1,000 years, Satan is released for a period of time, a season, the Bible calls it. That's when we probably have the battle of Gog and Magog. And then Satan tries to bring down the holy city of Jerusalem. But there really isn't a battle. Because then God just destroys Satan. He, he throws him in to the pit. We call the lake of fire. Yes. Then we have the great white throne judgment. And then the Lord, he separates the sheep from the goats. How many of you are sheep? Well, my goodness, maybe have some goats in here. I don't know. Uh, Heaven is sheep tonight. Hallelujah. You're a sheep. And the, the, the Bible calls it the, the chaff for the wheat. And then, uh, and then they are cast in the lake of fire. And then Jesus Christ sends a new city yes. called the New Jerusalem. Oh, yes. That's when the story's over. Right? Now it just begins. So, folks, we're not there yet. How many know that tonight? Amen. There's still work to be done for the kingdom of God. That's yeah. true. And, and I, I, I thank the Lord that you and I are a part of that work. Yes. It has not finished. Oh. Don't start telling God when your life is over. <laughs> you know, really, the United States and, and a few other European countries are the only nations that have retirement. That's right. Third world countries, they don't retire. Yes. They can't afford it. How many of you are retired now? Can you afford it? <laughs> you see a lot of people over there at Walmart. The Lord takes care of them. Because they're so happy to work. Jesus, thank you. And so I think that I'm not against retirement. I'm not, I'm not against that. It's just the fact that that's more of a modern idea. There are people that work in the fields in Asia till the day they die. Amen. And so, there, folks, there is no retirement in the kingdom of God. It's true. We, we may slow down a little, little bit, but you don't have to. <laughs> that doesn't mean uh, you, you're, you're retired just because we slow down. Right. Just because we're over at a certain age does not mean God gives up on us. That's right. He does yeah. not remove the anointing right. Right. or the calling of God right. or the mandate of God off your life. Amen. That's right. I don't understand that. That's true. There's no place in the Bible where God takes that off a person. Or releases a person. No. We continue to go and to go and to go. That's right. And I, 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 we're just a part of that. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Does anybody tonight have a testimony of what the Lord has done for you in this revival? And you want to share it with us? We don't have a lot of folks tonight. But does anybody have a testimony? Sister. I do. It's about Randy. He came with me Friday. This is her son. son yeah. God touched him. You can hardly hear out of one ear. God healed that instantly. Praise Hallelujah. God. Before he left you, he was breathing a lot of his ear. And I, I, you know, we used to celebrate everything. And he was with me almost all day Saturday. And uh, I usually, you know, text him when I get back home. He's over at 9th Street in Bell. So he always wants me to go when he comes home. So I 
said to me back, and I said, son, I didn't see any twitches in you since you had work. He said, one for twitch, mom. So I said, okay, just keep playing with your reading. Yes. You know, it's going to complete it. Right. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.
And we, we, we I think, serve it to the Holy Ghost because He does speak to people. Yes, He does. And He wants to talk to us. Yes. And like Sister Kimsey said a moment ago, if it's in line with Scripture, you're safer than that. That's right. How many of you believe the Bible is our. Well, it's like T.S. Everman said this way every river needs banks. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. Okay. The, the Mississippi has banks. The mighty Salt River has banks. That is not water. It has banks, it has banks no water. That, that'll preach. Rivers with no water. Uh, dry church. Uh, the, the, the Arkansas River has banks. In fact, sometimes they have to put levees along them. Anybody know what a levee is? A levee. So that it doesn't flood over. The Trinity River in Dallas, Texas, in, in Fort Worth, has a levee. So it doesn't go into downtown Fort Worth or downtown Dallas. And so uh, the, the river needs banks. And the river is, or the banks, is, is, the, is the Word of God. That gives the, that gives the, 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 the boundary. And then the Holy Ghost is what is the current of it. So we need to hear the Word. We need to hear the Holy Spirit as long as it's in, in uh, accordance with scripture. Yes. And how many of tonight believe that God wants to speak to us tonight? Yes. Yes. And maybe not salt and tape or sister be oil or something else. Praise the Lord. Yes. But it, God wants the best for our life. Let's pray. Yes. Father, we love you today. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I ask you to anoint me as I preach the word of God tonight to your church, to your people. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for it. And everyone said, Amen. Yes. John chapter 10, if you would. In your Bibles, John chapter 10. Sister, is that my water or is that your water? Has, has it been opened? Okay. Thank you. How many of you enjoy Sister Margie? Yeah. Uh, she gets everything together for, for the, the songs and then all of the musicians. Thank you so much for coming out and, and participating in this. That's your ministry. It's a ministry. Everything we do, we do as under the Lord tonight. Praise God. From Brother Valentine opening up the service to the, the, the benediction. We're all here to glorify Jesus Christ. The, the sound people back there. How many of you enjoyed the sound folks? How many of you the living was back there? That's kind of the thankless ministry of the church. Yeah. Um, it's never it's too loud, too not loud enough, whatever. But thank you so much for putting up with us. Praise God. It used to be when I when I first started preaching. Uh, when I was 17, we had one speaker in church. It was in front of the pulpit. And the pastor controlled it. And that was it. And nobody complained because there was nothing to complain about. Right. We didn't have all this other stuff, but praise the Lord for it anyway. I want to preach tonight for a few moments on Jesus Christ, the great shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you tonight know that we have a great shepherd, or a good shepherd tonight? Aren't you glad tonight for Jesus Christ? Yes, amen. Jesus says at the beginning of verse 1 of John chapter 10, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up by some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him that, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his what? Voice. Voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake un unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are, are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man entereth in, he shall be saved. That's powerful. Yes. 
and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Let me say abundantly. abundantly. And that word abundantly can also be translated as a surplus, more than you need. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Thank you, Jesus. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And another sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. He's referring to the Gentiles there. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Yes. And I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Hallelujah. And everyone said amen to that. Amen. We're serving a God, a Jesus, that really wants uh, us to make it. Yes. That really wants us to have a blended life. How many of you tonight believe that? Amen. But I really believe part of this goes back to who are we listening to? Lord. Who are we hearing? They kind of got quiet. <laughs> the Bible says there are many voices uh -huh. right. in this world. How many of you have heard voices? Oh, yes. You go into the mall, there's a lot of voices. Well, we're, we're hearing there's so much anymore around us. You go into uh, uh, just a restaurant, they have not so much uh, Bill Jean or IHOP, but other restaurants, they have uh, screens, TVs everywhere, uh -huh. showing ball games and movies. And there's so much to, to hear right. that distracts us. Uh, everybody has an opinion. You get on the news, we hear all kinds of opinions out here. Yeah. How many of you know that there's a lot of opinions? Amen. Do you have an opinion? <laughs> How many of you have opinions? Oh, yeah. How many of you are opinionated? <laughs> I guess I could fall into that trap too, brother. <laughs> we, we, we're all, we, there are so many voices out here, but, but Jesus said, listen to my voice. Yes. Yeah. Follow me. How many of you desire to cultivate a life that we can discern yes. the voice Amen. of Jesus? Amen. This is why I keep going back to prayer. Help this is why I go back to reading the Word. It's essential. Uh -huh. If we're going to be able to really understand and distinguish the voice of God. A lot of people, uh, they, they misunderstand the voice of God for their personal feelings. Bless How many of you know that feelings do come? Yes. And feelings do go? <coughs> How many of you here have ever had a good day? Yes. How many of you have ever had a bad day? Oh, yeah. How many of you have had good days and bad days on the same day? Oh, yeah. How many of you have had a few more times? You start out bad, you, you, you do it pretty good by lunch, and then something else happens in the afternoon, you, you, you have it down, and then all of a sudden, in that evening, you have another, and you, you end up good. Yes. That's why we come to church, because it's good to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. I love coming to church. Amen. Come on. Even if it's only 34 of us tonight, I think that's not what I counted. As people were coming in, whether it's 34 or 134 or 2034, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. I would rather be here tonight.
than watching something on TV. Amen. I'd rather be here than a Walmart. Amen. I'd rather be here than a Kroger. Amen. I'd rather be here than any place I know. I get to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. How many tonight are happy that you're here? Yes. Amen. Now Jesus speaks about who he is here in John chapter 10. Mm -hmm. He says he is the shepherd. He's a good shepherd. Yes. And it says he's the door of the sheepfold. Now, back in those days, uh, the only way we can maybe understand it is anybody know what a corral looks like? Being out west, we should know what a corral looks like. I don't have a dad and sister in uh, Massachusetts, but uh, corrals are where you put cattle. Now, the, now the, the sheepfold of this era, which we, we look at as a corral, did not have a gate on it. So when they would herd the sheep in, they did not have a gate that would close. The shepherd himself would sit in front of the, of the entrance or lay down to keep out danger. That's what Jesus is saying. He's the door. Hallelujah. He protects his keep. He protects his sheep. Can anybody in the house shout amen? Amen. So if a wolf comes in, or a coyote, or a mountain lion, they've got to go through him first. Woo, glory! Can anybody shout him in today? Oh, so he protects his, his people. He protects his sheep. That's why he said, anybody that came before me is a thief and a robber. Now what he's dealing with were hirelings. And actually what he's dealing with is the Pharisees, the religious leaders. They weren't really concerned about the people of Israel. Right. They just wanted to use them, yeah. manipulate them for monetary gain, mm -hmm. and empower them. Glory, right. Sounds like some politician. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, amen. It's just us tonight, folks. <laughs> uh, I listen to some of those people, and I'm thinking, do they even know how to spell? <laughs> Do they know how to add two plus two? I mean, that's pretty basic, which is it equals five, you know. <laughs> I, I listen to some of these people, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, the reason why it's, that we're having such cool weather is because it's global warming. <laughs> and, and then there's the reason why we're having such warm weather because it's global cooling. They can't figure out what they believe. But what it is, is all called manipulation. But Jesus does not manipulate. Amen. Amen. He calls them. Yes. Yes, Aren't you glad we're serving a God that's not out to manipulate? Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that tonight? Amen. How many of you are thankful that we're serving a Jesus that's not against you? Amen. That's trying to use us for his own personal gain. In fact, really, folks, we're the one that benefits from getting saved. Right. We're the one that, that benefits from, from having Christ in our life. Amen. Uh, I, I know we, we I know you know we can go back to the Old Testament that we are actually His prize and all of that. We're His jewels, and and I love all those texts. And maybe I'll preach on that sometime this week. But in reality, we're getting the best part of this thing. Yes. Uh, he, he, I'm going to say that again. We're getting the best part. Yes. How many of you are grateful that you have a great shepherd, a good shepherd that's overlooking you? Yes. Now, he actually wants you to make it. He wants you to be victorious. He wants us to have abundant life. Yes. But we have to begin to refine our hearing. Right. Bless the Lord. Good. Yeah. Preach Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, there, there is a real discerning of spirits, but then there is some people that are just suspecting all the time. They really don't hear the voice of the spirit. They think they do. So there's a, there's a, I, I can see this tonight because I, it's just a, not, we're not full and I don't think I would offend anybody. I was offending somebody. <laughs> I, I don't think this will offend anybody. But there's a new movement called um, the, Refor the, 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 the New Apostolic Reformation. Has anybody ever heard that term before? Oh, yes. And we're not talking about a oneness movement. We're talking about um, 
a movement where they're, they're trying to read, read it. Where, and I'm not, we believe in apostles and we do believe in prophets. We do believe in that. Yeah. But this new movement almost puts the Bible second. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. And they put Revelation above Scripture. Now, they don't say it that way, but that's the way they're applying it. Uh, they're, they're saying if the prophet says this, you'll be blessed. If the prophet says this. Mm -hmm. And and what happens is, is it, a lot of people get to follow this. Yeah. yeah. And they go to error, and then it never stops. Yeah. But I thank God we have a document here called the Bible Amen. that gives us correct doctrine. Amen. How many of you believe that tonight? Amen. I, I'm not going to follow a man. Amen. And I'm a minister. And, and I believe in, in honoring preachers. And we have a pastor here and other ministers of the gospel here. But we do not follow men. We follow the word of God that they preach. That's right. Amen. And, and so Jesus says something very powerful here in verse 3. He says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Let me say he leads them. He leads them. Now, the, the shepherd... A sheep will be led by his own shepherd. Back in this era, whenever the evening would come in and all the sheep were coming in, there were several herds of sheep. A lot of shepherds out there. And they would put them all in the same corral to sleep that night. In fact, they did an experiment over a hundred years ago and they brought in a Scottish shepherd and a Jewish shepherd and they switched clothing. <laughs> and so the shepherd from Israel put on Western clothing and the Scottish shepherd, that's from Scotland by the way, put on Middle Eastern clothing. And when it came time in the morning for the sheep to follow them, the shepherd that had the Middle Eastern clothing on he still had his own sheep that were Scottish and vice versa because they were not following clothing. They were following a voice. A voice. Huh? Praise God. <clears throat> and so therefore, the porter back in this days was the one that, that watched at night someone over the sheep. They put all the sheep in there and then in the morning when the, the shepherd would wake up, he would begin to call the sheep out. All of them would begin to go with a different shepherd. Huh. Amazing. It always amazes me how people can change religions so easily. Bless them, Lord. I'm not talking about, uh, uh, please understand, I'm not talking about the denominations in, these, in, in, in America. As long as I'm preaching the gospel, that's, I'm, that's great. I, I, you know, that's fine. But I'm talking about the belief Christianity become a Hindu. Come on. Or believe Christianity to become a Muslim. And that's happening now. Right. Or we're seeing people that are leaving churches and becoming Muslims. I'm thinking, how do you follow that? Right? Come on. Because you never knew the voice of Christ to begin with. Or if you didn't know it, something happened to you. Uh -huh. That's why we must stay close to the shepherd. Yes, amen. That's why we must be a people of prayer. Yes. That's why we must be a people of the word of God. Yes. This is what never changes. I, I thank God for, for many of the evangelists on our TV. And it's great for people that are shut in, right. that can't get out uh, into a service. Right. But if, that, if you're getting your doctrine from TV, you're going to be all messed up. That's right. Amen. Because they're all preaching something different. That's right. Amen. It's called pop theology. In fact, really, and I'm not trying to get on a pet peeve here, but or a soapbox here, but when you go into Christian bookstores, and it used to be when you went into Christian bookstores, we're talking a long time ago, when I was, there was Brother Woodall, he used to have a bookstore across the street from Southwest, you remember Brother Woodall? And all of his books, back in those days, dealt with theology. Amen. And you had to think about it when you read the book. You had, they, the, the men that the woman, the men and women that wrote commentaries a hundred years ago were thinkers. Yes, they were. They, they, they investigated the scripture. They, 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 because they believe that the word of God interprets itself. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Can I get a witness out here tonight? That that's the first rule of Bible interpretation. The Bible interprets itself. You don't look for a, a, if you, there's an interpretation that's extra biblical. You've got to watch that. 
And so that's how we were taught. But now it's pop theology. Yeah. It's about a, a pretty face on a book. Come on. It's about a catchy phrase of a book. Because they're not so much about selling uh, correct theology. They want to make money off the book. And so we have people that are running around that do not know the word of God. Uh -huh. They do not know the correct voice of Jesus Christ. How many tonight, though, brother, you and I must get into the book. Yes. We need the power of the word of Almighty God. Yes. Because the Bible will never lead you astray. Yes. If you believe it tonight, shout it in tonight. That this is Jesus. He wants his sheep. He wants us to know his voice. Do we know the voice of Jesus? Oh, Jesus. Yes. Yeah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He, he says he'll, he'll lead you. Verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Oh but see, as a preacher of the gospel, I have a responsibility to know the word of God. That's right. Yeah. That's a heavy responsibility. Amen. Because I have to give an account right. to God right. on the day of judgment. That's right. For what I had preached. Amen. Amen. Because I believe that the minister is set, is given a higher standard. Yes. Than the laity. Yes. Because we are Christ's ambassador yes. to the congregation. Yeah. In fact, the way our churches are set up, the way that our furniture is. It's set up as if though we were in a ship. <laughs> That's how it's set up. Captain. That the where the pastor stands, he's like the captain of his ship. Mm -hmm. And the congregation are the oarmen. Okay. And he looks out out there into the ocean to see if there's any impending danger. And a, a captain of the ship will look out and see a storm approaching or rocks out there. And he tells the oarman, move to the right, move to the left, slow down, speed up. In fact, years ago, pulpits in churches, I think even in New England or maybe Europe, were actually where the captain stood and they took them out of the ship and put them in the church. Wow. That just went through me. Yeah. I love to shout. I love to run. But that's not what this is the primary purpose of the preaching of the word. That's right. That's a word. Yes. I love all music. But the two most important furnishings of any church is the altar and the pulpit. That's right. And the modern church has minimized those two furnishings. Come on. They take the pulpits out and put in music stands. Uh -huh. Not that it's not that that's wrong. It's the reason why they don't uh -huh. right. want to pull. Bless the Lord. You follow that? Uh -huh. It's not that you have to have the altar bench. Because some churches don't have enough room to have them, but they still come forward to pray. It's why they don't want that. Right. 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 Yeah. right. That's what scares me. Amen. When they minimize the preaching of the word. Oh, Jesus. In fact, when I was in Southwestern, I came up in a homiletics class years ago. And one of the students told I asked Dr. Moon, our, our homiletics teacher. Don't you think that preaching is just preaching when you say I'm going to preach to you is just too too narrow? You put it in a way like you're you shouldn't be saying that. You should just say you want to share the word. And that our teacher said, no, no, the scripture says preach the word. Amen. How many of you know folks that we are preachers of the word? And, and so as a minister, I'm responsible 
to the, to the ability that God has given me, as Sister Kimsey and any other ministry out here, to preach the gospel so that they'll follow Jesus. Right. How many of you desire to follow Jesus? Amen. And He'll lead you. Yes, sir. How many of you believe He'll lead you into all truth? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, amen. I, I've been in some, in some uh, churches that there, there, there's a strange incense in those churches. Anybody ever been in a place like that? Amen. It's strange. It's something strange that it, you can't put your finger on. Yes, amen. It, it, the, the, we, they may sing our songs. Mm -hmm. They may lift up their hands. They may speak in tongues. But there's just something not right. Yes. Right. Have, have you, yeah, am I the one that's ever been in a place like that? <laughs> and, and you're like, what, what is going, what's going on? It's called false doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. How many of you want correct doctrine? Yeah. Amen. The word doctrine is teaching. Yes. And so Jesus said, you'll hear me and you'll yeah. follow me. Uh -huh. yes. And how many of you know that the Lord will not lead you astray? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Can anybody say praise the Lord? Today? Praise the Lord. Right. Now, verse 5. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of the stranger. It doesn't say walk away. It says run away. Right. Yeah. Run from false doctrine. Amen. Run, run from that which is not correct. Yes. You have a right to run. Let me say run. Run. Say it again. Run. run. Praise the Lord. We, we run from this. And then he goes on to say this in verse 7. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be what? Saved. And we say, Jesus Christ is the door. Jesus Christ is the door. Be saved and shall go in and out and find what? Pasture. Everybody say pasture. Pasture. Now what does he say here in verse 10? The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now you can always tell false doctrine what happens to them. These are the three things that happen to people that do not follow Christ. That, that, that the thief comes. He comes to what? Kill. Steal, kill, kill, and what? Destroy. Destroy. Everybody say it. Steal, steal, kill, kill destroy. destroy. He wants to steal from you. Right. He wants to take from you. Mm -hmm. He wants to rob from you. Right. And then he wants to destroy what he takes from you. Come on. And then he wants to kill you. Yes. And how many know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Hallelujah. Let me say eternal life. Eternal life. Say it one more time, eternal life. Eternal life. And how many of you believe that Jesus Christ has not come to steal from us? Amen. He's not come to destroy us. Amen. He's not come to kill us. Amen. But he's come to give us life. Amen. And that is more abundantly. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that in Jesus Christ, in our salvation, we have abundant life right now? Amen. There's a surplus. What does that entail? One of the greatest things I believe that abundant life deals with is our peace with God. We, do, we have peace with the Father Hallelujah. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are no longer under the, the anger of God or the wrath of God. We are now under the peace of God. How many of you are glad for the peace that you have? That you, you and I can lay our head down at night and have peace with God to know that if you were dying in the middle of our night, or since we're talking about dying, if you die in the middle of the night, you're going to be in the presence of the Lord. Can anybody shout amen to that? And how many of you believe that you and I are going to be in his presence one day? Yes. There, there are two things a, a, an old preacher told me many years ago. He said, if you need peace with God and peace with yourself. Yes. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Whoa. If I'm at peace with God, I'm at peace with myself. Yes. If I'm not at peace with myself, I'm not in sync with God. That's right. Amen. I so then I examine my heart. I say, Jesus, examine me. Holy Ghost, examine me. Show me your word. What's out of sync with you? Yes, amen. 
And the Holy Ghost will begin to reveal that to you. He'll begin to show that to you. How many of you want God to show you? Yes. I'm not asking God to show me things about Valentine. Right. I'm asking God to show things about me. Amen. And then if I have peace with God, I'm at peace with myself. Yes. And then if you're at peace with God, and you're at peace with yourself, I can be at peace with you. That's right. true. But what happens is, when people are not at peace with God, they're not at peace with themselves, and they're not at peace with each other. Uh -huh. And therefore you have arguments, you have problems, you have this, this, all kinds of stuff that goes on, you have wars, you have rumors of wars. Uh -huh. yeah, and, and, and let me tell you something, back in the 1960s, when the, when the Vietnam era was going on, everybody was doing this peace. And, and Bert Bacharach wrote that song, what the real means now is Love. love, sweet love, whatever that was. Yeah. You're not going to get, get get peace by, by drawing or painting flowers on bands. <laughs> You're not going to get peace because you just go, peace, dude, love, not war, all that kind of stuff, the smokes and pot. And that's not going to bring peace. What brings peace is the Prince of Peace. Get in the house, shout your name. Yeah. And how many people think you can have abundant peace? Amen. Yes, amen. I don't believe we have. Uh, listen, there are things happening to people right now that I've never heard of before. Uh, bipolar. Mm -hmm. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Uh, when I was in high school, we didn't even, those were not even terms. I remember a girl when I was in high school, uh, she said she was depressed. I didn't know the word that. I go, Brett, what is that? I, I, she was on medication. So that was not a part of a young person's... Uh, uh, do you remember that in those days? I mean, uh, depression, you never heard about that. No, it's true. Come on. That's you got older. There's things that people are facing right now as, as young people that we never heard of. That's right, amen. And that's the thief. That's right. And that's the devil. Right. Now, I know really Jesus is dealing with these, the, the thief and probably actually the Pharisees. I understand that. But I want to apply it to the nature of the devil. The nature of the devil is to rob you of your peace. Yes, amen. But when you have Jesus and you have life, you have abundant peace. peace. Amen. Not only that, you have joy. Yes, amen. How many people you can have joy unspeakable yes. and close the Lord? The joy doesn't come because of the things you have. Oh. Is the thing is what you what possesses you on the inside. That's right, amen. If you're at peace with God and peace with yourself, you'll have joy. Oh yeah. He'll yeah. keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stale. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. oh glory to God. Glory. Glory. I'll say, let's just say, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. And how many of you tonight have the joy of the Lord? The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is not in meat and drink, but in peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many of you believe that you can have a surplus of joy? Yes. How many would like to have more joy than you need? Amen. How many would like to have joy in the morning? Yeah. Joy in the afternoon. Yeah. And then joy when the sun goes down. Goodbye, world, goodbye, or return. You know, to, to a non believer, that's a downer. Right? Because when you die, you go to hell. <laughs> but not for the believer, you look forward to that day. When yeah. you say goodbye, world, goodbye. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice knowing you. Don't come back no more, no more. Can anybody in the house tell you tonight? Yeah. 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 Woo! 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 Down there. Oh, yeah. And they have supposedly a dead girl 
and a glass casket for the catacombs of Rome. And they have to cut her hair. <laughs> this is blonde. And all these Mexicans, especially the poor ones, kneel down to her in that glass casket and pray to her. Oh my. Lord. And you walk in there and you feel like you're at a funeral because you are one. You are, yes. And then the Pentecostals put up a tent. <laughs> on the outside of town. <laughs> We're going to get a witness. Yeah. And we put up with this back then, this before we had, well, even out today, we can't really do it, but uh, because of the, uh, it, it, we, we, we pass out uh, a chorus books. We didn't have PowerPoint yet. I mean, so we put out, pass out chorus books. We teach these people choruses. And you see, no idiot, no grande como tu, no lo hay, no lo hay. That's, I know Chris, you can't get it, but if you have spiritual, you get the interpretation. <laughs> and, and they just said, there's no way they can, uh, like Jesus Christ. And these, these people that have been in steep in darkness and death and bondage, all of a sudden they begin to, to get saved and they begin to sing, hey, Jesus is not dead. Jesus is not on the cross. Jesus is alive. Blouses, 
Oh, they speak not even they speak Romano. That's what the, the language is. Uh, they, everything they have is for sale. You go out to Gypsy Can that said all the cars have for sale signs on them. Uh, everything is for sale. And, and, and so now one of those gypsies came across the street. Put up a tent, started services over there. One night, one of those gypsy girls after about a year and a half wanted to find out what it was about. Because she had heard a scene. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> over there, there's no air conditioning. There's no air conditioning. About 200 Mexicans in there, and they're all really saved. They're just learning about Jesus. But let me tell you something. You don't have to know what all to have a better life. Amen. Amen. Yes. You don't have to go to Bible school. You don't have to be ordained. You, you don't have to know every every verse of the Bible by, by heart. All you have to do is believe what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us at the cross. Amen. Amen. You know, the most things come later. Thank you. That's right. I don't listen to me. I don't do that. I don't go to Bible school. I don't. Be, I don't become a minister to get joy. I became that because I had it. Amen. Amen. Do you follow that? Yes. yes. Come on. Hallelujah. No, you, you all get that. Yes. yes, your joy can increase. Your peace of God can increase. Your knowledge of the Lord will increase as you get into the Word of God. Yes, oh, we believe in all that. But the life comes as a result of the abiding presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. Amen. And we are Pentecostal and we believe in the filling of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? Can you imagine, you know what really has always shocked me and it's still <laughs> perplexed me, maybe that's a better way. Pentecostal people that look like they suck persimmons <laughs> 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 They look miserable. Right. Bless them, Lord. Uh, <laughs> Bless them. Uh, So she went back and told the chief of the of the gypsies. She said, You need to go check this out. <laughs> so he came. He got saved. <laughs> Next night, 450 gypsies walked Thanks across the street into that church. Oh, God. And all those Mexican women got their purses. Here come the gypsies. But how many of you believe the life of Christ is for everybody? Amen. And that's what changes people. It's not us. That's right. It's not who we are. It's making Jesus real to people that He can change lives. How many can I believe that Jesus Christ is able to change lives? How many of you have you? How many of y'all have been changed? Yeah. Yeah. Have a change. Yes. Praise the Lord. This is what I have. We are going to say praise the Lord. Not only do you get peace and joy, you get eternal life. Yes. Amen. Yeah. 
Glory to God. Amen. Well, as I probably mentioned this to you last week, I think, maybe it was with Sherry's church, I can't remember. When I was in Southwestern, you know, when you go, when you become an adult, <laughs> and you get, you, you start working in the, out here in the world, you find out all these doctrines. Uh -huh. And I, I was working as a waiter because I was, was taught that if you work as a waiter, you'll never go hungry in school. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was a waiter, and uh, there were some preachers in there that were waiters too, that are moonlighting, and they were with a denomination uh, that didn't use musical instruments in the church. So you figure it out. <laughs> and I was talking about being saved, and they said, you can't know you're saved until you're dead. Oh, oh my God. I said, I can't. I never knew that. There was a foreign altar to me. All right. I said, I, I, I'm going to heaven now. I have eternal life now. The term saved is past tense. Mm -hmm. I was yes. saved. I am saved. I am yes. saved. Yes, hallelujah. I, I, I can't get any more saved than I am today. I can get more sanctified. Right. Yeah. I, can, right. I can get closer to Jesus. Yes. But as being saved, I can't get any more saved than I am right now. How many of you tonight are saved and you know I'm saved? Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And, and this, all of a sudden, that, that strange voice came out. You can't know you're saved. And he said like that. You can't know you're saved. No joy? Well, I guess he, he's not saved because he doesn't have joy. I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm thankful that I don't have to just wait to have joy in church. Amen. I can have joy out there in the street. Yes. I can have joy wherever I go. How many yes. can I have joy and you have eternal life right now? Amen. Yes. So Hallelujah. See, the Bible says, though the outward man Paris, the inward man is renewed day by day. Glory. Don't, don't judge me by the way this looks. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not very nice. <laughs> because on the inside there is eternal life. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. And, and when God saves us, He has a sense of humor. How do we know that today? Amen. And so we show our gratitude to the Lord for what He's done by worshiping Him. Amen. That's why we lift up our hands. Yeah. That's why we shout glory to God. Yeah. That's why we say praise the Lord. Yeah. That, that's why we do what we do. It's because we're thankful for what Jesus yeah. has done for us. Is anybody here thankful for what yeah. Jesus well, has done for yeah. you? Yeah. If you want to put your hands and say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I never, I never I said that. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm moving in this sermon, by the way. <laughs> but there was a lady in from, in from, I was preaching down in the, by Sierra Vista, Arizona, some years ago, and, and I was working. I'm always working out of the gym somewhere. And there's a lady in the gym that went to a non-Pentecostal, we would call it a neo-charismatic church. And we were always talking out there. She went to a large church down there, not, not Pentecostal. It was kind of, it was, I don't know what it was. Anyway, she she went to the church, and, and and she I would talk to her, you know, once in a while about the Lord, and, and she would tell me about how that her church was so deep, 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 deep. deep. Deep, 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 deep. And uh, she said, I like the meat of the word. She was telling me that, implying that we don't preach the meat of the word because they're so deep that we just, I don't know what we preach, I guess the milk of the word, that according to her, that we're kind of a step lower than them. And, uh, and you know, I, you know I, I, I'm a, I, 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 I have a side to me that gets irritated. <laughs> And so she was cleaning around the treadmill I was on. And I told her, I said, ma'am, I want to assure you that uh, we do preach the word of God. And we do preach the meat of the word. Uh, we just don't stand behind a pulpit when we do it. Uh, in a moment, I told voice. Can I get a witness out of here? Yeah. Because we get excited yeah. when we preach the word of God. But, but don't misunderstand me now. Don't think that we're shallow because we shout. Or we're shallow because we lift up our hands. Or because, because we say, can I get a witness out of here? It doesn't mean we're shallow. It just means we've got joy. I, I'm sorry, man, if you don't have that, God, you can keep what you've got. But I think
And then he goes on to say this. I know I'm going to finish up. No, looking, I want you to come back tomorrow night. <laughs> Verse 15. The Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I, what? Lay down my life for the sheep. Uh -huh. That means he's going to die for us. That's right. But this is what he said. <laughs> Another sheep I have, and other sheep I have, Amen. which are not of this fold. Now, have you heard that before? Where Jesus has other sheep mm -hmm. in the Mormon church? Yes. The Mormons teach that. That. That's right. Uh, that's the people, the Jews that were in Mexico. I know, that's what I thought the first time. They said that to me too. That when Jesus said that he's referring when he when Jesus was going to go to Mexico. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and what's amazing about that, I, 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 when I was in Salt Lake City, I got the movie they put out called The Testaments. Have you seen that movie? The Testaments is how when Jesus did go to Mexico. Yeah. And that when Jesus died upon the cross, it was a big storm or a big uh, earthquake in Mex South Mexico, Guatemala. And that uh, that's what they knew that Jesus had died on the cross 5,000 miles away. They knew that 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and then when Jesus ascends to heaven, he comes back down on a temple in Mexico. And they said, that's the other fool, the other sheep. Well, I'm going to tell you something, folks. Jesus is not just referring to people from Mexico. <laughs> right? He's referring to me. Yeah, yeah. hallelujah. Because I'm a Gentile. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm a Jewish. <laughs> right? And my bank account can prove it. <laughs> can I get a witness out here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Jesus said, I, I'm not just going to come to the Jews. Right? Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to come to the Gentiles. Yeah. You say, well, what does it say down in the Bible? One place it's told is in the book of Luke, chapter 4, when Jesus goes back to Nazareth. Right? And he reads Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he said, anoint me to preach. And then he goes on to say, this is also powerful. He said, now there were many wid widows in Israel, but only Elijah went to the one of Sarepta. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And there were many, many lepers, but only Naaman was cured. Yes. See, the one from Sarepta and Naaman were not Jews, they were Gentiles. Right. Yes. And Jesus is saying, I'm not just coming for us. I'm coming for everybody. Amen. I want to save everybody. Woo! How many of you know that Jesus wants to save everybody? Yes. That there are some people. <laughs> Help I do want everybody to be saved. <laughs> but there's some people I just like, I wish Lord could hurry up. <laughs> right. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ has come for everybody. Yes. Then he goes on to say this. And I'm the, another sheep have I, which are not of this fold. Then also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may might take it again. Mm -hmm. No man taketh it from me. Hallelujah. But I lay it down of myself. Uh -huh. I have power to lay it down, no, it. and I have power to take it again. Yes. This commandment have I received of my Father. Hallelujah. When Jesus died on the cross, He freely gave His life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yes. That, that to me is... Awesome. I do not understand that kind of love. Yes. Amen. He freely laid His life down for you and I. Jesus. Pilate never had power over the body of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Herod never did. The Jews didn't. The Romans did. Right. He freely offered himself as a sacrifice mm -hmm. for our sins oh, yes. to his Father. Thank you. Jesus. That's amazing. Yes, it is. But Jesus said, I have power to lay it down. Uh -huh. I have power to raise it up. Yes, hallelujah. So remember, would you come and just play something on the piano? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus had power to lay it down. And power to raise it down. Thank you. I would say that with me. 
Jesus has power to lay it down and power to raise it up. Hallelujah. In fact, you know that scripture, this is what I believe, and you can disagree with me, but because Jesus' body never sinned, he became a sin offering at the cross. But the Bible says his body would not see corruption. This is what I believe about the body of Jesus. That when it was in the grave, it was impossible for his body to decay. Amen. I don't believe it was a putrefied body like Lazarus was. Right. The reason why we, we, we age is because of the curse of sin. That's right. Think about it. Is that correct? Yes, amen. But Jesus was never cursed. That's right. He never sinned. Amen. So when he's laying in the tomb <laughs> and his spirit departed, that he gave his spirit. He yielded unto the ghost. Yes, he did. I believe that it went into the area what we call the bosom of Abraham. Uh -huh. Preached to all the Old Testament saints and possibly everyone in hell. I don't know. Preached to all the Old Testament saints and said, I have come. The Messiah has come. And he took them out of the bosom of Abraham, which we call paradise, Hallelujah. and are in heaven. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. His, his body was laying there, Jesus. empty of all blood because it had been poured out at the cross at Calvary for us. So, to Mary, aren't you glad you're saved? I, I like this lady too, for example. I like that kind of plane too. Jesus Christ came out of that tomb and they glorified God. Yes, amen. Yes. Amen. And I preached on that so many times. But when he came out of that tomb, I believe the light, the lightning that those soldiers saw was actually Jesus. Yes, amen. I believe it. Yes. I believe it blinded them. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh, glory to God. And they fell. Hallelujah. <laughs> when that earthquake came. Hallelujah. And, and the tombstone was not moved to let Jesus out. Uh -huh. It was moved to let us see. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. <laughs> he didn't need a tombstone to let it out. No, he didn't. He walk through it. That's right. <laughs> and so this Jesus... By his spirit lives in us. I have resurrection power in you. It's not mine. It's his. And I may not be the greatest preacher or the most impressive. Let me tell you something. We can hear the voice of God. And he will not lead you through confusion. Uh-huh. He will not lead you through anxiety. Amen. He's not going to lead you through depression. Hallelujah. He brings us out of those things. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You say, well, don't you ever struggle with those things? Of course. I'm a person. But I don't have to listen to that voice. Amen. I can immediately realize this voice is not the voice of the Holy Ghost. This is not the Word of God. This is coming from another source. Therefore, Jesus said, you will not follow. That's right. Oh, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Follow Don't get My very last point, I promise, is not even 9 o'clock. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Is that what it says? That word rule means umpire. 
Anybody ever played baseball before? We all did. You have an umpire. He calls the shots. You're out. You're safe. Fly ball, round ball, whatever. Well, the peace of God will call the shots for your life. So one way that you know if you're following the will of God is if you have peace about it. Yes. Yes. And if you don't, you just wait on it. But if you do have peace, they go for it. Amen. You don't say it. I, I have the peace of the Lord. You're making a decision. You have, if you're, if you're, should I buy that house? Should I not? Should I buy that car? Should I not? Uh, what should I do? Uh, and you don't have peace about it. Just wait on the Lord. No, no. Kenneth Hagin said this years ago, and I, one thing, he said some things I didn't really agree with. He said this. He said, if God gives you a word to a prophet or someone, and you're not sure about it, put it on the shelf. It'll still be there. And if it's God's will, you can take it down. But if it's not, you didn't lose anything. That's true. God really wants us, as I said at the beginning of this message, really wants you to make it. Yes, He does. You really do. Lift your hands with me, say. You're loving Jesus. Lord, I'm asking for the Holy Spirit. There may be some people in the midst of making decisions. They want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. They want to find the follow the leading of the, of the, of the Word of God, of the voice of Christ. They want to know the voice of God. But they're conflicted. They love Jesus. But they're just trying to discern. But oh Lord, your God, you, you lead us to peace, joy, life. And if you have anxiety over this, folks, it may not be God's will. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but all things, prayer and supplication. There's nothing like being the perfect will of God. Jesus, speak Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, begin to pray in the Spirit right now. Pray in the Spirit. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Jesus. 
Jesus, you are the great shepherd. You are the good shepherd. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. And the Bible says only God is good, and you're God. Oh, Jesus. So when you said you're the good shepherd, you're referring to who you are as your deity. You're good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're good to us, Lord. You're good to us.
you. He's a paraclete. He's a comforter.